know, welcome back to the ministry, take two. I have a word for you in relation to kingdom marriage. Now, I was getting two words simultaneously when I got this. I got the previous word that I gave y'all. I don't know when you're going to see that one. It may come long before this word comes up. But what the Lord is saying right now, there was a movie that popped up simultaneously when he was giving me the other word, because God speaking to me like that, that what happens is he'll give me one word and sometimes he'll give me another word while he's speaking another word to me. So I'll be like, wait, I'm trying to receive this, but I'm seeing this. So I need to give you this. Okay. This is the word. You about to get married. I don't know who this is for, but I pray in the name of Jesus that for the ears of the person that it's supposed to reach, don't be grabbing on words that don't belong to you. You'll know because of the way God's been talking to you. This is how we operate. God speaks to us. And the way God speaks to us will dictate and show us where he's about to bless us. If you're paying attention and you're spiritually aligned. Okay? You will know if the Lord's been telling you you're about to get married. Like now. <laughs> You will know. Okay? I need you to hear me and hear me clearly. The movie that came on this morning that my father was looking at. The man, I just so happened to glance up at the screen while I was listening to something in my ear. In relation to what the Lord was showing me in relation to another word. The man in front of me was talking to a woman. It's an old black and white film. And the man said, will you marry me? And the woman said, of course I will. And the next thing she said, which drew my attention, was the fact that she said, it wasn't her, it was actually him who responded, you did not look for a younger man. Do we not recall Ruth? In the book of Ruth, that when Boaz was on the threshing floor and Ruth presented herself before him, what did Boaz say? You did not look for a younger man. Some of you, your spouses are older than you. Some of you, God has put you in that scenario where the person is not your age range. It's a significant gap between the two of you. Because God in this season is putting together unlikely couples. There may be an age difference. There may be a uh, ethnicity difference. I know that's the case for me and mine. That that's the case. God is preparing you. But when this man comes in, when I hear, I tell you, I've been hearing proposal, proposal, proposal. Every time I look at my phone, it's 221. 221, you get married. 221, 232. You're getting married. 230, 221 means proposal. 232 means you're getting married. All over the place. Continue, continue, continue confirmation. Next thing, three rings. When you get married, what ended up happening in the film was there was three marriages that happened simultaneously. The couple that was coming to get married and then it was two other couples that were also getting married at the same time. It was a younger couple and then it was an older couple, and then it was that mixed couple where it was one was younger, one was older. God is putting his people together. Secondarily, <clears throat> three rings. When you get married, how many rings are there? Standard, under most case marriages. In some cases, it's two, but in a lot of cases, it's what? Three. Engagement ring. 
wedding ring for you and your spouse's ring. Hear me what I'm saying. You're about to get married that fast. I remember last year, and this is something I guess the Lord wanted me to add because I wasn't going to add this. I, pre I previously recorded this and I deleted the video. So I came back. I've been seeing, I saw the title, And Just Like That. There's a TV show called And Just Like That. And I'm reminded of this. Come on. There used to be a show that used to come on. I watched it when it came on. Uh, it was it was a show about being in a reality show called what? The Big Leap. Catch that. Oh my God. God's put this way together. Oh my God. The Big Leap. This is a leap year. Do you hear this? Oh my God. And in the show... The guy had to marry the woman quickly because she actually was dealing with a terminal illness. We curse all illness by the fire of the blood of Jesus Christ. We don't come into agreement with any terminal illness coming against you or your spouse in this time and in this season. You're going to have a live and a long, long, healthy life together. 120 years if you can in the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you, hint, hint, look up the video that talks about the apricot juice that causes people to live to 120 years. That was just a bonus. Anyway, <laughs> um, in that particular TV show, the guy knew that the woman was dealing with this and he they were in a grocery store and he said, he just happened to look at her and was mesmerized by her and said, marry me. She said, okay. Okay, and what they ended up doing the whole episode was about them, everybody coming together to do the wedding for the two of them. And they got married immediately. Um, there was no time wasted. I don't even think it took 24 hours. They just announced it to the people that they were associated with in this contest and they put the stuff together for them. This wasn't even supposed to be part of this word, but it's for somebody. <laughs> um, immediately. It's going to happen immediately. Now, you already know. I already linked y'all the video in previous weeks uh, talking about the Jennifer Lopez song, Midnight Trip to Vegas. And for somebody, that's relevant. <laughs> immediately. Fast. Because when all blockades are moved, and this is why the enemy has been coming against you and your spouse. Because he's got to get your spouse to think that you aren't going to want to be in relationship with them. Because it's, it's a last ditch effort to split y'all apart. Pray for your husband's mind. Pray for your husband's mind. Because he is supposed to marry you now. And when that breaks, whatever it is that's trying to come up against your husband's mind as a yoke. And I spoke about this. That um, in previous seasons, I have had issues with my ankle. I broke my ankle when I was in 11th grade. So every once in a while, I get a pain that makes my foot want to stumble. Your spouse is being tripped up right now. The enemy's trying to trip him up with everything that is a, a, a stumbling block for your spouse. Whether it be coming into his dreams with lust. Whether it's coming into his reality with old because they had to come into their dreams first with lust. These dummies. They come in with lust first. And then they come in the natural with a counterfeit. That because they were lusting anyway. The counterfeit comes in front of them. And they're like. Oh she don't want you. Because they're trying to make the enemy. Trying to make them think that. You don't want them. Let me satisfy that need for you. When it's not the case. Curse that thing at the root. If you saw the previous video I talked about that, curse that thing at the root. Because they're supposed to come to you. And when this, um, I'm seeing a veil. Veil breaks. When this middle wall of partition, Ephesians 2 and 14 breaks. When that middle wall of partition, this man coming in hot and heavy. Immediate. Proposals marriage. Proposals marriage. Proposals marriage. Oh, that reminds me. It's going to be back to back. It's going to be a back-to-back -back 
blessing. The marriage is going to come because they're going to propose to you first and then they're going to take you off and marry you. Back to back. Back to back. And for those nosy people, <laughs> nosy, nosy people, <laughs> understand something. If God had given me this word, I wouldn't be saying it. And I would never <laughs> hear me when I say never, ever, 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 ever. I got to get Tiffany Montgomery on y'all. Ever. <laughs> ever. Tell y'all if this was happening for me right now. I will go radio dag on silent on y'all. So to every demonic assignment that the enemy will try to bring against me. One, you can't stop it if it was. And two, I need you to understand that I wouldn't tell you anyway. I would act real normal. You would still be getting what you got and we keep on moving. You see it when it comes up publicly. Because I will be publicly exalted, I tell you. <laughs> so I just wanted to add that in there. Is there anything else? Oh, you're going to have to learn to adjust. In some cases, you're familiar with your spouse's lifestyle. In other cases, some of you going to come in and it's going to be hard and heavy. And you aren't adjusted to your spouse's lifestyle. Maybe it's where they are right now. Or you're coming into a relationship with somebody you don't know and it's going to be this quick. Which reminds me of the factor that yesterday on Let's Make a Deal. And the Lord had my dad repeat it. This is how I knew. These two people were on a boat. The woman was telling the story to Wayne Brady about the fact, and I've been seeing this a lot happen on Let's Make a Deal. Everybody keeps telling their marriage stories. That the woman was telling Wayne Brady about the fact that when she met her husband, they met on a boat, meaning they were on a cruise or something. While they were on the boat, the captain officiated them getting married. Y'all going to get married that fast. <laughs> Next. The fact of the matter, because you're going to have to adjust, because you're going to be tossed into this individual's life. If you've never met them and you're just coming into the relationship and you're taught, I'm being reminded of Dharma and Greg. You remember the old show Dharma and Greg? Maybe you don't. I never used to watch it, but I remember that the, the first episode of Dharma and Greg literally was these two people met and got married the same day within 24 hours i've been seeing marriage at first sight marriage at first sight marriage at first sight some of y'all get married at first sight some of y'all have been trying to get in your mind it can't happen that fast. it might not happen that fast it could and for some of you remember the seven day post that i gave you that's how long it's going to take it's only going to be seven days Meaning from the time that they come into contact with you to the time that you get married to this person is going to be seven days. Because randomly I'm noticing the song from uh, Mary J. Blige that I did a review for in relation to kingdom marriage. It's been popping back up. I don't listen to this song. It's not on my plate. I listen to Mary J. Blige. I don't, I have not listened to her in repetitiveness god knows how long i haven't even had her on my playlist so the fact that this particular song popped up seven days and it talks about the seven days go back and look at my other word what is the name of that other word <laughs> um i talk about the three songs oh the instructions it's in september I did this word at the beginning of September. I believe it's the word that comes just before the turnaround. Okay. Scroll back in my videos. You're going to see it. It's going to be right next to. It's an arrow talking about turning point. 
And I believe the image on this particular video is um, a man on a donkey. I've been seeing 909. 909 means that they're coming lowly on a donkey, meaning they're going to come with uh, the answers in which you need. They're going to come with the repentance. They're going to come with all of this type of stuff. But once they come and release that from themselves, they're going to want to marry you. They're going to want to propose to you. They're want to, going to want to take you off and it be done. Next, once you get married with the adjustment period, you may feel like it's hard for you to adjust at first because it may be certain mindset shifts. You're the person that's used to doing everything for yourself. And they're telling you, I got a maid for that. I got a this person for that. I got an assistant for that. I got a this for that. And you're like, I know. I can clean, I can, I got something for that. And you like, ah. Some of y'all are going to be shifting into luxury lifestyles. My main minister talks about this all the time. And you will have to adjust to the fact that you don't have to do it all. You've been the one that's had to, God's pulling you into his royal status. You ain't going to have to do all of it. It may seem absurd to you, but for some of you, just getting married. I do believe, help my unbelief. Please pray that. Because <laughs> it's coming. And what's going to happen is you're going to feel a little uncomfortable with all of these changes. And you're like, but I can do that. And, and, and they're going to be like, you don't have to. And you'll be like, but calm down. You're going to want to do this and you're going to want to do that. I'll take care of it. For some of you, you don't even know that a man can do this. And for some of you that have been with these people before, you don't know. You know them from before and they wouldn't do that stuff for you. But now they're like, God told me, mm -mm, I can't be doing it with you. I got to do whatever it is that I need to do for you. Because I love you enough and I care for you enough. Because the man in this film that was in front of my face today, the woman, she had made dinner and messed it up. And she was calling herself trying to cook him a really good dinner and it ended up messed up. And he said, and she was like, I wanted to do it right for you. And this, that I can't do this and I can't do that. And I don't know how to sew and I don't know how to do this. And I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I know how to do all those things. Anyway, but um, the guy was saying, it's okay. You'll learn. You're going to be all right. I love you irregardless to those things. I'm going to repeat that again. I love you irregardless to those things. There are things that you are worried about and you have been biting your nails over about coming into this marriage about this. Regardless of those things. There's a line in a, a song where the person was talking about the fact of the matter he was expressing the fact that pretty much that he was glad about her and that the things that he is looking at in relation to her is he looks at her fondly and she could do no wrong in his eye that it would just take time but he's in it for the long haul. And the Lord brought my attention to yesterday. I was looking at an interview, which I never look at interviews with J-Lo ever. But this particular one, she was talking about how her and Ben had gotten married. And he had put as an inscription on her ring on the inside that it says um, something about it was three words and each one of the words had period pretty much saying I'm here for the long haul period each word period 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 I'm not going anywhere for some of y'all you haven't had either them to be there for you in a period stance 
or you've never had a man in your life be there for you, period. <laughs> so the man God is sending because this man reflects him and emulates his love for you. This person is going to love you, period. This is why I watch Wisdom Speaks videos. If I need a little bit of spiritual encouragement, I listen to her because she be sometimes talking about the love that's coming into your life. Period. <laughs> it's going to be so much love, so much caring, and I be feeling it. Some of y'all need to feel the feelings. That's another reason why the enemy is messing with your man's head because you've been rejecting the feelings of love that, that, that your spouse has been trying to send to you. So, is that everything? Oh, the last thing. The scripture from Philippians. Though it tarry. I've been seeing 311. There's this, and specifically for this word, 311 means this. 311 means the scripture that God, uh, that Boaz took Ruth and said that I'm receiving you in the virtue. That I have seen what you have done for your mother-in-law and I'm going to take you on as my wife. Secondarily, Philippians 3 and 11 speaks of, uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. It speaks of the fact that. Okay, no dear brother and sisters is Philippians 3 and 12. Uh, no dear brother and sister, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. Forget the past and look forward to what lies ahead of you. The blessings, the promises, the marriage that is coming. I press and reach the end of the race. You're coming to the end of the race. Oh, let me read that scripture too. Because this just was confirmed to me the other day. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 9 and 24 that states, Know ye not that they which run thy race run all, but one who receives the prize so run that ye may obtain it. The message version says, You've all been to the stadium and seen the athletes race. Everyone runs and trains hard. We're in the middle of the Olympic season, y'all. They do it for the gold medal that tarnishes and fades. You after one that's gold eternally. So understand that though these things have taken a long time, they're coming forth immediately. Okay. And when they come, they will not tarry immediately can take one to three years, but though it come is, it shall not tarry. And I'm being reminded of another scripture. What is the scripture Lord? Uh, is it Luke? Yeah. Luke 12. I think it's Isaiah. Oh, I can't think of the scripture number, but the scripture I'm talking about that it talks about the fact that it's it's scripture three and five, but I can't think of what book and what the, the actual is. I believe it's four, chapter four, scripture three and five, but I can't think of which book it is that talks about the fact that I, these are you're going to see the coming of the things that I told you about previously okay and they will they shall no longer be held up this promise is no longer going to be held up from you the manifestation this is a season that God is bringing forth what has been in heaven and the princes of Persia and whatever demonic principality has been holding up, it's going to come forth now, whatever that looks like for you.
And I pray, Lord, Father God, that you release that into these people's lives. And I'm allowing the Lord just speak through me that, just, that you may receive it. I pray, Lord, that the Lord, he would send the people that needed to hear these words to me. And I pray that these things were made be made manifest in your lives. That I'm not just getting these words for me. That I'm not just getting these words for my own health. Because I don't have to do this. I'm doing this because God will sit on me and say, speak. Because of how I sit in his presence. You can take it or leave it. You can believe it or you don't. But I hope that you received this well. And that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I actually wasn't planning on this word being that long. I thought it was going to be five minutes, but it's 26 minutes. You do not squelch the Holy Spirit. So he needed you to hear all of that. And I hope it blessed you and you receive what you needed out of this word. Your time is coming. Your time is now. The Lord showed me 737, which is a further confirmation. I was thinking that 737 means now because in Strong's Concording, 737 means now. But in tandem to the now of the situation, Mark 737 literally means that you will experience the joy that it will come that your spouse's deaf ear is open and that he will be able to speak. Communication is coming. And when it comes, the speed is going to start. Be ready. I've been seeing an advertisement of a watch every day on my phone. The time has come and now is. And God just gave me that. It's time. It's time. You are about to reap the blessings that you've been praying for. Now, I hope this blesses you. And until next time, much love, faith, peace, and blessings to you. Bye-bye.